The Radeon RX 6000 series is a lineup of graphics cards developed by AMD. It was released in late 2020 and marked AMD's entry into the high-end graphics card market, competing directly with NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3000 series. A year later, the AMD RX 6600 debuted on the market, a mainstream priced video card intended for 1080p gaming. Fast forward a bit to present days and AMD launched the successor of the RX 6600, but at the same time and seriously reduced the price of the older card. The price is very attractive and for this reason I decided to test how the card performs in 2023. AMD recently launched its brand new Radeon RX 7600 graphics card for $269, but it looks like the older RX 6650 XT might still be a better option for gamers. It looks like GPU manufacturers are having big trouble with their older generation cards, offering better value to gamers than their brand new offerings. NVIDIA faces the same issue with its RTX 3060 and RTX 3060 Ti, which have recently received price cuts and are now available at lower prices than the RTX 4060. 7600 is direct successor of the 6600. It's definitely a better card, but also more expensive. At the moment, the price of 6600 is just 179 or $66 cheaper than 6650 XT and $90 cheaper than 7600. I think that at this price the card is a very attractive offer. With some clarifications, of course, we are not talking about 4K resolution but about 1080p and 1440p and no ray tracing. Let me quickly recall the specs of the card. AMD Radeon RX 6600 features 28 processing units, 32MB AMD Infinity Cache, 8GB GDDR6 memory, and a game clock that reaches up to 2044MHz. It is using 128-bit bus. The card is based on AMD's RDNA 2 architecture, which brings significant improvements over the previous generation. TSMC N7 process, Navi 23 GPU, 237 square millimeters die size and 132 watts typical board power complete the specs. The card in this test is from PowerColor. It is not an overclocked variant, just a standard and cheap RX 6600 fighter model. PowerColor have two better models, Hellhound and Red Devil. The test system consists of 55600 CPU, 32 gigabyte RAM in dual channel and NVMe SSD. I decided to test at 1440p or 2K resolution. Yes, AMD markets the card for 1080p, but I think the card is powerful enough for 1440p. Of course, not the latest games and not at the highest ultra settings. Let's start with the testing. A few benchmark results from games. All results are without AMD FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution upscaling. At Cyberpunk with high settings, the average FPS is 41. If the quality drops to medium preset, the FPS rises to 49. At Forza Horizon 5 with high settings, the achieved frames per second are 101. Far Cry 6 with high preset again, average FPS is 82. And the last game with build-in benchmark is Tomb Raider. This time I decided to bump the quality to Ultra and the result was 65 FPS. Overall very solid results for plain gaming, without streaming, without bells and whistles, without maxed out settings but with high enough. Towards the end of the video you can also see gameplay footage from several other games, Fortnite, GTA 5, Death Stranding and Atomic Heart. All the footage is captured and encoded with the AMD software. Keep in mind that this has little impact on the performance.
Man! Damn it, why is everything locked here? Emergency mode was activated as soon as the robots began attacking humans. Facility 3826 is on lockdown. That includes the inner sector. So how am I supposed to open this door? It's locked with an electromagnetic 